making my way down Route 98, taking a breath, making mistakes, have a little faith, and singing all right, singing all right. You know, I, I feel like it was almost born into me to some extent. You know, what I've done, you know, as a passion is home renovations. I've renovated a few houses. And so I learned a lot of the techniques and skills before there was YouTube to learn how to do a lot of those things. I was figuring them out one mistake at a time. And I just loved it. It was just passion. It just drove me. But I'm into this tiny kind of, you know, concept, minimalist, minimal, you know, use of, of you know, fossil fuels and all of the things that I could do to, to make things smaller and more efficient. It's my creative endeavor, but it's more about, like I said, the process. I mean, figuring out how to use what you've got to make something that you want. I am a restore fanatic. I will go out there and pick through stuff and what can I do with this item? What can I do with that? Just because I thought I can do this, I want to figure out how it's done. I just couldn't stop myself as I probably had half laughingly referred to as my obsessive compulsive disorder uh, crossed with some attention deficit that sort of balanced itself out into a person who could stick with something but you know just continually coming up with new ideas and what's the next project and what can I make out of what I got you know so it, it, I just built that way as far as I can tell. Well, good morning. Uh, my name's Kenny Faust. I'm from Manhattan, Kansas, and this is my ego. It is my tiny home on wheels. This is a 1976 Dodge. It was a uh, Class C motor home when it was built 40-something years ago. It's got the 400 Chrysler motor and the three-speed power glide, whatever it is, transmission. It's got 68,000 miles on it because it became a party van 20 years ago and people just drove it back and forth to the football games as far as I can tell and, and had the motor rebuilt on the upper end because it sat so long. So I'm feeling fairly confident with the motor, but you can never tell. The top, it, it had been so rotten and the whole body of it just needed to be ripped completely off. I just had to tear everything off of that right down to the platform and build it from there. But that was really the plan when I bought it. I saw it out on the road and said, this is the perfect thing to put my tiny house on because I'd already built the trailer part. And I'll explain that, I guess, as we go around, right? So the spare tire was mounted clear on the back. This piece of metal had been, was part of the frame on the very back of the vehicle. So in fact, I, I was able to find a way to mount that to the bumper, add me a little more protection between myself and the road, which has always been a bit scary. And I did add a three point, uh, uh, seat belt in there to make sure I had a little more space but this thing it, it actually may or may not actually fit the bolt pattern on here somebody told me it wouldn't so and it's it's the original age of the tires and these things were 25 years old when I bought it I drove it out here and I had then I decided I needed to put new tires on it they tried to put this one on they said they couldn't so they mounted it uh, they gave me the spare back and I was able to mount it on there so that's kind of it, it, I'm lucky I can put it there because I don't know where else I'd put it. <laughs> All right, so when I bought it, like I said, tore off the whole back, which means the top came off and I had to build this part uh, to fit over that. And I found some parts from a Murphy bed that I'll be probably referring to repeatedly that I have for a headliner in here and along the bottom of, of this uh, underneath here just for strictly decorative uh, function. I had found windows at the ReStore and a whole lot of materials from the ReStore, a lot of restored material. But I had to actually buy these, costing four times as much as, so they'd match the back ones. So I have an antique ironing board that I can fold out as a workbench. And it's actually on a hinge that I can pull a pin out and I can take this around to wherever it needs to be. I was going to try to make it into like a traveling bar you know and have a tap over here on the side but in fact practicality wise I haven't got there yet so I just have my storage in here and mostly just tools and and the things that I like to use which I'll refer to potentially my favorite glues like this quad max that's some great glue it happened to just fit it's like so many things I'm going to tell you about this thing just happened to fit in here and I so I made I indented that enough for it to fit but it happened to be able to sit level and so then basically the, the, the original thing was a box. This was a trailer I had built on a small frame that I had from an old travel trailer. And so I built this, this box with, with this being the front corner, or the, actually this would be the back, and that part up there was the front. 
and it had been, this is some old flooring board that I'd had for 35 probably years that I'd used in a lot of places. It's only an eighth of an inch thick. It's mahogany. It soaks up this polyurethane marine grade varnish like it was, you know, makes it into a big sheet of plastic practically. Found this, uh, and I call it wainscoting, but somebody says, no, it's beadboard if you use it up there, but it was wainscoting because a guy had torn it out of his kitchen when he was remodeling. So it's got a nice patina, it's older, and I, and I was able to glue it to this surface. Had to buy the cedar boards, and they're basically the structure. So that's just a sheet of styrofoam. There's no wood structure in there. I put a one by two along this side, going down uh, to hold the window in place. I made these panels in the garage on the floor and then stood them up onto the floor I'd formed. And this is actually another piece of that Murphy bed. It was the side section of it. Makes a nice, I guess you'd call that a fender. And then I had these old boards that came from a barn that, that was probably 100 years old that I was able to use as my base structure to drop this box onto. This box was in, it had been picked up and I backed the truck under it. I do have an outside outlet that I can bring in shore power but I never use it now because I'm never in a place with shore power that I need with, what, 1100 watts of solar on top. And so I'm running a 24 volt system, but it's just two lithium batteries. So it's fully charged like all the time. So this side is pretty much like the other side with, with the exception of the fact that I have my gray water. So when I built the trailer, I had a flat floor. This is actually the gray water that goes down into this five gallon. Got a little extra storage from the water there. And then I was able to fit this uh, Bluevered door, thinking I would have plenty of, of, of ventilation for potentially the two propane tanks and, uh, and the instant water heater that uh, really will run for a while, but I have to open the door if I want to take a shower to run it long enough to actually keep hot water. It'll actually kill itself over time. I have hot and cold water out here. Originally, the uh, water heater was going to be on the outside and I was going to run cold water into this and it was going to come out of there and pump hot water back in through there. But now I don't have to do it. I, I plumbed this all in with the pump and the tank so I don't have to worry about hanging it outside. Still have to worry about it freezing, but I don't have to worry about it being on the outside. For me, living in this is, is like I've, you know, it's, it, when it's your own creation, I mean, I'm just happy as I could possibly be in here, and I just enjoy sitting in, and I just enjoy looking out the windows and looking at the beautiful views in the mountains, and I feel, I feel like, God, would I say it? If it took nine months to build, I feel like it's my baby, and your baby's always beautiful no matter what it looks like. This one turned out kind of beautiful, but that really wasn't exactly the plan. Like I said, I just wanted to build something, and I wasn't sure how I was going to use it. I'm almost as much into building it as I am to using it, but I just love it. The drawers are, so this is actually, so originally this, this, this is where the sink was on this model, and there was just a piece of plywood over that. And so I put a new countertop on it, had this sink from the restore and this, this from the restore and the refrigerator inside of there is actually from the restore. So, and this door was some old cabinet door that I had that because the old plywood one is, was pretty much shot. And so I have my, my water pump right here and 20 gallons of water. And then the hot water is, they're kind of reversed because well, you don't do everything perfect. Oh, and then this door, so this is basically all the food storage. So this is just a base of, out, of a, of a, out of a very old, that's out of a very old refrigerator. This is a bunch of stuff I'm never going to eat, except the chocolate. Maybe I'll finish. I didn't even know that was in here till just now. So Now what I did for, for keeping this shut, this little hit latch was something I'd had forever I didn't know what I was going to do with. And then this was an old piece of molding. Like when you look around here, you'll see a bunch of the trim is just old molding. So it's a mishmash of different styles and types of wood. But I was able to fit this in here so I can have my canned goods. And I've put a piece of styrofoam in there to kind of have them roll down from the back. And that seems to work good for, for uh, but you know, I've got way more food than I need. I've got way more shoes than I need. I've got way more clothes than I need, way more bike stuff than I need. When I found this little tiny refrigerator at the ReStore, I was able to take the front, the front door off of the, of the original unit and I was able to glue it with that Mac stuff to the back of this. And then I was cut the front off the door and mounted it to this surface here. And it turned out that, that I had just enough room for this gasketing to close off pretty tightly. And so then down here below where the, where the wheel well stops me pretty quick and it's sitting right on top of it, 
I've got, uh, you know, I've got my eggs and my butter and stuff that doesn't need to be kept as cold down inside of there. And so then you have the door that locks, it doesn't come open, and it, and it was, uh, and it, but it burns a lot of power. So just cut flurry, and then I wanted something to lift out. I got paper plates under that. So that these are nice deep drawers. I'd like to figure out how to use them more efficiently. Nothing in here, plates. I I still haven't, you know, figured out. And I got some some. Uh, some some pots and pans in there actually though with the induction I keep the main the main skillet right in here and this oh and this then is a cedar chest a, that a hope chest that my great grandfather had made for my grandmother and so it fit in here perfectly so the the cedar chest has also provided me with a with an enormous amount of storage and that probably won't open all the way because of the because of that board but I guess it folds up so I've got my 3000 watt inverter in here. I've got a couple lithium batteries. I got my power controllers, but all this side over here, and this, that's not my toilet. This happens to be just a sleeping bag. Got way too many bike clothes, way too many shoes. And I had a bunch of tools in here. I had moved to the other side. So, because I was getting at them so often, but that's, that's, and then the wheel well is right there. So it, it, it works out to where I, I was able to hide all of that space. This, this old checkerboard that has been in my family probably for a hundred years had, had served the purpose of potentially making a table for me. And I had this strange little metal contraption that comes off of these Barrister bookcases. And it stands up there and I thought, well, I could sit here and play checkers. And somebody could sit out there, but you know, I don't play checkers. But it does serve as a table and it does serve a few basic purposes. And so these are the Barrister bookcases out of my dad's law office. There's four of them in here. And so you get this homey feel. You've got that. This is a piece off of that same Murphy bed. You've got these things that have been around. I've had this door, I mean, parts and pieces for years and years and years. And these were the things that actually were left over when, when we moved, you know, downsized, right? This door was out in my barn. I'd had it for 30 years. I don't even know where I originally found it. But it lines up under one of my, one of my deck board structural pieces. I lag bolted it through the top and through the bottom. Basically, it's, it's mostly for structure, but it fit, it, you know, it fit nicely as a, as a shower wall. And in fact, so the shower is here, but the, uh, the uh, what do you call this? Shower curtain rod will come out like this, and this curtain can be pulled across. And I do that at nighttime, it keeps a little more heat in here. But it also allows and, and a, a little more privacy security so I can get dressed. So when I'm wanting to take a shower, I simply pull out, simply pull out the closet. And then I got a curtain towel rod that cut one of those basic under counter towel rods. I pull it out, swing the, swing the, uh, the, the, the curtain rod back and it tucks in behind there. And I end up with a really pretty large shower space and more stuff from the restore. I bought that shower stall probably 10 years ago thinking I was going to use it. Same way with the shower top and, and odds and ends. These are pieces that were around. I probably picked that up at Goodwill. So I was, you know, just kind of look around and say, what have they got and how can I use it? This is actually a baluster. It's a piece of redwood. I had gone to Lowe's. They were closing out, you know, they had like 10 of these and, and then the square ballast had 10 of those. So I made this out of those. But you'll also see this is, this is the same redwood. I cut this, I made that. I put trim around this window. This is an, uh, the piece up here is a piece of it. This is actually, of course, one of them. And whether it's structural or decorative, I'm not sure, but it, it's, <laughs> a little structure is always good. And this is another space that, that I probably ought to cover up a little bit better. I, you know, I found one of these things and I can tuck stock socks and, and underwear and clothes into here, but I'd like to put the same kind of cover over it that would, would disguise all of that a little bit better, but I haven't actually managed to to find, you just kind of wait till the right thing comes up. The real plan is to not really plan too far in advance, but when you find the right thing, you know it and you just use it the way, you know, as, as God intended, right? The front, you clearly don't want all, all of the, I mean, that would dump out heat like mad in the nighttime. So what I really have for that is this, this thing that looks like my bed was made briefly, pulls over and drops down to to cover the to cover that space and drops down to the floor so it works 
really well just to make it look like I have a made bed and not a huge mess up here. So when I was actually creating the, the front part of this, I built this kind of box and I knew I had this space and I knew I was going to build this garage space. So I built these at the same height as this plywood. So I, I've got a board back there that I can drop between these two and the cushions that are off of the couch will f I cut them to fit right in here. So the bed theoretically at this point is well, it's four foot from here to the window, and then it's like another two foot. So I got six and a half feet roughly this way, and six and a half feet roughly that way. Now, on this side over here, I actually have an antique picnic basket that's been probably used by my, what, grandmother? I don't, I'm not surprised to say. And it serves as now dirty clothes, which are seemingly getting filled up at this point. I don't know why, <laughs> but people come up and we can talk and I can find out about their lives and we can talk about where they've traveled and what I've done. It's a great conversation starter. The whole build is a great conversation starter. I can, you know, go from there into, you know, any of a number of things that we, you know, have in common or don't have in common. Stay in the present, live, live the current experience, you know, just see what's happening right now is, is seemingly the best way to go. You're not sitting at home thinking about your future or worried about your past, you're like in the present and I totally respect that amongst the group that's out here and these are, are wonderful people. Try it out! Figure out a way, even if you rent something, go out and, and live the life. You can hike, you can do what you want. You live in nature, you see the experiences. I mean, the whole stress reduction, you know, is, is probably, you know, the idea that get out of the same rut, the same, you walk down the same path every day, you see, think the same thoughts. You're out here, you're just living the moment and talking to people and looking at their their jobs and just, you know, all of it just flows into your, you know, into your head from a different angle than what you do day to day. You have 1,100 watts of solar? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Well, I started out and... and, and you know you're a pretty smart guy there, buddy. <laughs> that, things just happen, right? Hold on. Mm, sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, my butt, my pants are about ready to fall off my butt, so I'll pull up and tuck in. All right, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Can you say a few things for me? I could say a few things. I could say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get me started. I decided people quit coming over to see me. The word getting out. Don't go talk to him. He's, he'll talk your ear off. You can, just My don't, just, thing, just, just don't, like, just don't get, so lonely, you know? don't get the fucking man started. <laughs> Oh my God, did you ask him a question? <laughs> no. Exactly. Yeah. All right.